This training video outlines the steps to create your first electrical circuit in Automation Studio using NEMA standards. In the process of recreating this circuit, the user will learn how to create an electrical circuit with generic components from library, how to do circuit addition, how to assess component properties and help, and how to run simulation and analyze the circuit. An electrotechnical compatible document needs to be created at first to draw any electrotechnical circuit. For that, go to the Home tab, click on Document and select Electrotechnical Diagram. An Electrotechnical Diagram Templates window will pop out. From this window, choose a template as per your preferable standards such as IC, NEMA or default which is compatible to both IC and NEMA standards and click on OK. Observe that a new document named Electrotechnical has been added in the project. All components needed to build your first electrotechnical circuit, which is a basic RLC circuit, are contained in the main Electrotechnical NEMA library. Select Electrotechnical NEMA library. In order to create the circuit, move the components from the library onto the schematic. To do so, select the desired component from the library, in this case an AC source. Drag and drop it onto the schematic while holding down the left mouse click. Similarly, drag and drop a register, an inductor, and a capacitor. To zoom in the schematic, go to the View tab of the ribbon bar and click on Zoom in function under the Zoom tools. Other zoom functions like zoom page, previous zoom, zoom all components can also be found at this location. Alternatively, to zoom in and out, press and hold down the control key, then scroll up to zoom in or scroll down to zoom out of the page. Software will zoom where you are pointing your cursor. To pan the document, click on the panning function of zoom tools. When you click on the panning function, the cursor transforms into a hand and then you can pan the document by holding the left mouse click and moving the cursor. Alternatively, you can press and hold down the spacebar and move the cursor to pan the document. To disable this function, just right click on the document. If you need to change the visual representation of a component, functions to rotate, flip, align, distribute and order components can be assessed from the edit tab of the ribbon bar under the layout tools. Just click on the component and select desired functions or right click on component and select desired manipulation functions or simply use assign hotkeys. To organize the circuit layout, both the inductor and the capacitor needs to be rotated 90 degree to the right. Select inductor, then click on position function in the layout tools and select rotate right 90 degree. Repeat the same procedure for capacitor. Now establish connection between all these components to create the RLC circuit. To connect components, move your cursor over a red connection port and click when the target sign appears. Release the button, draw your line with the cursor and click on a second connection port to establish connection between those two components. Both connection ports automatically become black when linked. Similarly, connect all the other components. Now that all the components are connected, you can start the simulation. Go to the simulation tab of the ribbon bar. Click on normal simulation icon under the control tools to start the simulation. While in simulation, click on the multimeter command of troubleshooting tools. To take measurements with the multimeter, select the AC voltage mode. Click on the red prop and drag and drop it on the PH port of the power source. Now click on the black prop and drag and drop it on the end port of the power source. 
the multimeter should display a value of 120 volt. To take an AC current measurement using multimeter, select the disconnect command of the troubleshooting tools. Click on the pH port of the power source. Click again on the wire above the power source. The wire should now be cut. Right click anywhere on the document to disable disconnect command. Now select the AC current mode of the multimeter. Click on the red prop and drag and drop it on the pH port of the power source. Click on the black prop and drag and drop it on the wire free port above the power source. The multimeter should display a value of 103 mA. Click on the multimeter command again to close it and stop simulation by clicking on stop simulation icon under the control tools. Now let's learn how to build a basic electrotechnical circuit as shown initially. Before that clean the schematic by deleting the RLC circuit. Firstly learn how to disconnect a component from the circuit. To do so press and hold down the shift key, click on the component and drag and drop it elsewhere on the schematic. Now to delete this register right click on it and select delete. You can also delete components using delete key of your keyboard. Select all the other components to be deleted one by one while holding down the shift key. And press delete key of your keyboard. All components needed to build a power circuit are contained in the main electrotechnical NEMA library. Drag and drop a three phase source, a thermomagnetic circuit breaker three poles, a three poles normally open. and an asynchronous motor scroll cage 3 phase AC. Now connect all these 3 phase elements together. To do so, go to the home tab and click on polyphase wire configuration of the wire tools. In this window, you can choose the required standard from the drop down menu. Select L1, L2, L3 from the standard list and apply. Now click on polyphase wire command to complete the connections of three phase circuit and connect the components in this fashion. Right click anywhere to release the wire cursor. In order to provide the command to your power circuit, now you need to build a command circuit. Drag and drop a transformer with two windings. Two ground. A push button switch, normally open contact, when inserting an electrical control component on the schematic, the software asks for an alias for the component which is displayed on the schematic and is used to identify the component by linking it with other components. Let's give it an alias, start and apply. Similarly, drag and drop a push button switch normally close contact and give it alias stop. Now drag and drop a relay coil and name the alias C1. In order to connect the transformer to the power circuit, Select power wires from the wire section of the home tab. Connect the transformer 
to the power source by connecting the transformers port H1 to L3 and H2 to L2. Since the three phase power source provides 208 volt as shown here, the primary voltage of the transformer needs to be at 208 volt. To assess the component properties window of the transformer, right click on it and select component properties. You can also open the component properties window by double clicking over the component. Select data from the left side menu and change the primary voltage to 208 volt if it is having some other value in order to match the voltage provided by the power source and close the window. All components in automation studio also have a help file describing their functionality. Right click on the component and select context help. In this window, you can get information about the operation of the component and its features. This window also provides description of each property of the component available in the data tab of its component properties window such as properties related to its appearance, modeling, characteristics, external data, operating condition and so on. You can also assess the help file by clicking on the component and pressing the F1 key of the keyboard. Now select command wire from the wire section and establish connection between all these components to complete the command circuit. In order to connect the relay coil with the transformer, you need to change path during connection. To do so, when drawing a line while moving your cursor, click when you need to create a 90 degree turn and connect. Select ground wire and connect the asynchronous motor to the ground and the transformers port P to another ground. You can also select the type of wire by right clicking on it. Now link relay coil C1 to the three poles normally open. Double click on the three poles normally open to open the linking window. Click on the variable assignment from the left side menu. Use the filter from the compatible simulation variable section to sort the variables and only show the one matching your criteria. Here, poles normally open has to be linked with relay coil of command circuit which has alias C1. So write C1 in the filter. Once identified, double click on the alias to create the link. You can observe question mark symbol has been replaced by C1 confirming that the link is created. You can also see in the association span that now there is an association between the two components. You can also add measuring instruments in the circuit. Add arm meter from the library to take current readings during the simulation. Right click on arm meter and select lock size command to unlock its size. Reduce its size and again right click on it and enable lock size command. Now insert it into your diagram between thermomagnetic circuit breakers and three poles normally open by holding down the shift key. You can move component satellites and adjust its location as per your requirement. Move the RMS current satellite to a more convenient spot around the ammeter. Similarly, move the variable load torque 
satellite of motor to a more convenient spot. Now that measuring instrument has been added, start the simulation to see how the circuit will react. While in simulation, when hovering over a component, if the cursor transforms into a hand icon, you can click to interact with that component. Click on the thermomagnetic circuit breaker 3 poles to close it. Then activate the 3 poles normally open by pressing the start push button. You can observe that the motor starts when the 3 poles normally open get activated and stop once the push button is released. To latch push button, click on it and hold the mouse down. Continue holding the mouse down and drag your mouse away from the push button. Release your hold on the mouse. The push button should stay latched. You can also change the parameters during the simulation. For example, if you move your mouse over the motor, your cursor will change to a hand. Left click on it and modify its setting and the effect of these changes can be seen in the simulation in real time. Observe that the reading of the arm meter and the speed of the motor are changing when the, with the applied resistive torque. Deactivate the three poles normally open by latching the stop push button or you can click again on the start push button to deactivate the three poles normally open. Now stop the simulation. You can also display the tripping countdown of the thermomagnetic circuit breaker during simulation. Double click on the circuit breaker to open its component properties window. Select data tab. Click on the box next to the tripping countdown to display the variable on the editor and close the window. Start the simulation. and increase the torque on the motor until a tripping countdown starts on the thermomagnetic circuit breaker. Once there is no time left on the countdown, the circuit will, breaker will open to prevent current to go through. In this way, you can create and simulate different electrotechnical circuits.